Right, so we're all set to uh, to weather our class 20. Um, everything's laid out, very professional of me. Uh, there's a little class 20 from Hornby. Um, reference picture, I mean, how professional can you be? And coffee, there we go. So, um, let's clear the decks and let's get going. So this is our class 20 from Hornby. Did a uh, mini review on this uh, yesterday. I'll put the link up the top there. Uh, this is 20901, so this is from 1959. Um, and um, the blue is probably the, the elephant in the room, as they say. It's a bit bright um, if you compare it against the reference picture, especially the one on the iPad and what people are saying on social media. It's a touch bright, so we're going to need to darken that down. I think we'll take the body off first, it's just that we then. Um, it's easier to handle anyway because they won't start getting overspray on the wheels. Um, they're going to go um, for their own separate bit of weathering later anyway. So buffers come out, they just pull out and then we just splay the body apart and the top comes off. It's um, yeah, one of the simplest actually. So and there's our beautiful blue um, paintwork and um, we've got a, uh, a custom made holder for our uh, wagon, for our um, body shell there, so, which is, um, well, sort of a holder, so anyway, there we go, pop it in there, just easy to handle. So to darken it down now, some people online have used, um, they've just um, used an airbrush and put black over it, you know, very thin sort of black, but we're doing a little bit different, we can use oils, this is a black oil and you just need an absolute tiny amount we're just going to put a couple of little dots on as if you're doing like uh, filters if you do color filters with oils is that sort of thing just a really tiny tiny amount of oil now, the good thing of oil is you see we make a mistake or don't like it we can wash it straight off with um, with, with the correct thinners so um that's so really good for that so this is one of the reasons i'm using oils rather than um acrylics um thin down in an airbrush so a couple of little dabs on, and then we're going to brush it in, um, and really, really brush it in. So nice soft brush, and it needs to be almost invisible. It's just going to look um, a little bit dirty, so it will darken the, the a blue down, so it'll take some of the saturation away from that. And may even uh, give it like an oily look anyway, which is something that we're going to be more than happy with. So you can see it's darkened the blue down a little bit and as I said you need to really make sure you really work that in just not too much and then with a, uh, a wet brush this has got thinners on the correct uh, thinners for oils we can just then clean the livery lines off that, that yellow line um, or anything else we need to do so that kind of gives you a bit of an idea it's difficult to see on the camera with the lights um, but it has made it a darker blue which I think is going to be okay too much oil on there Dave, um, might need to sort that out in a minute, well uh, we'll see what happens. So there we go, we've got to brush it in and uh, yeah, way too much, absolutely way too much. There we go, we're going to be excited with my brush there, so uh, I'll clean a bit of that off I think. There we go, so that's just a damp, uh, that's just a dry cloth, just to take some of it off, we'll brush that back in again. So that's the one of the one of the beauties of uh, of oil paints if you've not used them before. They take quite some time to dry, probably a day or so, um, but they're so easy to clean off with uh, with the great thinners. So that'd be kind of okay for right now, I think. Again, a little bit overexcited with the uh, amount of oil there. So uh, just brush away, blend it in as much as we can. Now the vents we're not going to pay much attention to they're going to be coloured anyway so they're going to get um, um, a, a colour of weathering and probably some soot on a couple of those anyway um, particularly that big one in the middle of the screen there now if you've gone around the whole of the model and done this on this particular blue um, if you don't like it when you come back you just carry on uh, blending more, adding more, taking some away so we're going to clean off that uh, livery line there. Again, this is a, 
it's not completely soaking wet so it's just uh, moistened with, uh, with oil paint thinners. And then just brush it along. You can use a cotton bud if that's, um, if that's easier for you to use. And then we'll clean around the, um, the logo doesn't have to be too precise. One of the good things about weathering, as far as I'm concerned, is that it's not an exact science. We haven't got to be that perfect because nature's not, um, you know, perfect the way that dirt will um, settle on your on your train. And you know, if these are going to be cleaned um, in real life, possibly they're not going to be a perfect clean. So, um, so if you get little bits and pieces here um, of sort of over spray and so the oils, you know, not quite cleaned off. It really isn't going to make a lot of difference. So that's one side done. Um, so it's a little bit darker. You can see again it, on on the camera with the lights. It's probably not as um, uh, obvious as it is. It is if you see it close up. But it definitely has darkened it down a little bit. And we'll uh, we'll do the other side and the roof. I probably won't show you doing everything. Um, we'll just sort of skip ahead a few times so just to give you a nice comparison on the top so there's the first um, that first panel on the roof and you can see in, in contrast to the blue that's next to it so uh, you can see the effect it's had now if you want to do a faded color you do exactly the same but rather than using blue you could use white or a um, a very light sort of cream maybe and that gives a nice effect for faded paints especially on um, some of the BR blues and the greens I've used before so there we go it's too much on the top didn't like that so I'm just gonna clean that back a little bit and then re-blend it with our dry brush make sure this brush the big one always stays dry um, otherwise you won't be able to sort of blend your your oils properly just won't work so there we go, pretty much uh, that's all done. Now the panels won't all be exactly the same shade, so there are a few little differences on there. As you'll see, one of the panels is a bit brighter than the rest. So we've put some masking on the rear windows, uh, the um, arcs for the, uh, for the wipers. And we are now going to add in a little bit of sort of the grimy color that we've seen in the in the picture on um, that I had at the beginning, the reference image. Now these are what we call oil brushes. So I've used these many times before. If you've watched my videos before, you've seen these before. And these are oil paints, but they're already um, thinned down, they're already mixed down. So you could use them straight out of the bottle if you want. The brush is much too big for what we're going to use. So we're going to pop them in there. And uh, the reason I've got two is that I haven't got the exact color I want. I'm just going to mix them around until uh, until I get a shade that I like, which is really for um, that grime that we're going to see um, covering uh, lots of the the detail on the on the class 20. So we're going to start with the bottom now. This on sorry, I'm going to start on the front. And um, so this is really really thin down. You can see it's um, almost like a wash going to pop that in and sort of around the detail just going to apply it and then we're going to we're going to take it back off in a minute now these lights on the class 20 seem to pick up um, quite a bit of the of the grime obviously there technically speaking it's the front of the loco although they seem to be traveling in reverse most of the time but um, because of the detail around it they seem to pick up the grime anyway but it's nice to get some the little bit of the brown wash in there um, and it just highlights the details so we just do a downward um, sort of motion that would leave sorts of st uh, streaking as if it's been washed away by the rain and if you're not happy with that you could just uh, apply more or leave it to dry it and then come back and do a bit more or just take it off and start again whatever um, whatever you think is correct now these are lights on the front here so they normally would have um, lenses in um, 
the Hornby Railroad model obviously doesn't have lenses in it's just um, you know one of their cheaper models in the range but that's what those uh, <coughs> those lights would be the same on the back you can see the uh, the makeshift um, mark the, the arcs for the wipers just to mask that off just so when we get um, any spray of the um, the acrylics on the laser on there's going to be a clean patch on the windows um, to imitate the the wipers and we're just going to dot this on where we think it would uh, sort of gather or where you think it would start its um, run from So if you use a downward motion with uh, with your brush or your cloth or your cotton bud or whatever you're going to use, you'll see that um, it collects underneath the um, you know, the lights in this particular case, so, uh, which um, sort of simulates the way the way the rain and um, you know maybe even the the, the the washing the machines where these are washed um, they would miss certain certain parts of the wagon. Same thing on the doors on the sides. Both of those. So this doesn't work as well if you use acrylic paints. Um, they dry a little bit too quickly, or much quicker than this. You can use um, sort of retarders in there that stop them from drying and leave them more um, fluid and. Uh, Sort of workable for a while but um, nowhere like you'll get with an oil paint so it's really worth investing in these um, there's some some, some nice uh, options out there for particularly for rust streaks they're very good um, we're using it really this time just for grime running down the side um, but certainly I would uh, I would give them a go you only need a couple of colors a couple of shades of rust black and a white maybe and you've got everything you need Now for the vents on the side, I thought the, the, uh, the sort of grimy colour was a little bit too dark, so I'm just going to mix a bit of this um, beigey, I think it's, I can't remember what the colour is, I'll put the, the link in the description to the exact colour, but I've forgotten what it's called and I've got it in front of me now. So I'm just going to mix it down, it is a wash, I'm just going to, oops, smudged it, let's clean that off. So we just touched the brush, it's well loaded with um, with thin down oils. Just gonna touch it in and you can see capillary action will just pull it across the vents and it fills the whole of the vent up. And again you got too much on, you just take a bit off with an oil or with a brush. Um, not enough, just add some more. Totally happy with that, so we'll just clean a bit off and we'll give it another another pass. So this big vent is, is going to be um, it's going to get uh, a coating of soot um, if you look in the uh, in the pictures it's uh, darker than the rest anyway um, 
and it's up by the, the there is a, the, the extractor fan or the, the fan is above this so um, that's going to be sooty so it follows that these are probably sooty as well but we'll, we'll start somewhere and put a bit of colour in there There again, just to add a bit of uh, a bit of variation, we've added black now into that oil. We're just going to drop a little bit towards the bottom. we're gonna um, cover it in, uh, in some uh, black in a little while to uh, to emulate the soot and the, uh, yeah, the fumes exhaust So onto the um, the main of the sort of the grime on this uh, on this class 20. Now we're using um, Vallejo Air for this particular one, and I'll put the uh, the exact colour in the description down below. Now if you look on the picture, the one that I've been using, the, the rear of the cab roof is completely there is no colour left to it. It's just completely coloured in in. Uh, Grime, whatever, um, whatever that's really called. It's the, it's the, um, yeah, whatever this this coloured grime is. Now if we look along the side where the handrail is, I assume that's a handrail. Um, there seems to be on the pictures that I've seen. There's, there's a bit that's kind of cleaner than the rest, so we're just going to clean a bit of that off. clean it a little bit back and then we're going to spray over it again just to uh, lessen the effect a little bit but it just looks like it's um, it's being cleaned and then carried on getting dirty again apologies for the uh, camera focusing on the wrong thing so you can see that's now sort of cleaned back and we're just going to blow it in a, the airbrush just to uh, lessen the effect a little bit Should mention at this stage that um, before we started using the acrylics, the um, the whole of the body has had um, a matte acrylic varnish just to protect the uh, the oils, so that we don't start cleaning the uh, oils off when we uh, use any brushes or uh, any paints with this one. We're going to do the same all around the uh, the handrail, all around the, the top of the um, 
the front of the class 20 it, so we're going to try and vary it a little bit so it's not exactly the same all the way around so some uh, the areas of wear will be slightly different in in certain places or the um, the amount that's uh, of the grime that's been cleaned off by people brushing past with their clothes and their gloves etc Just doing the front of the, um, the loco here um, again. So the camera's got the wrong uh, wrong point of focus. I'm just blowing in the top of the uh, top of the front there and uh, over into the yellow, just to um, just to sort of darken that down a little bit. And again, we're doing you can see better now. So we're doing the buffer beam there, It'll be on top and along the side as well. Just really a small amount, just to um, just to bring it in line with the rest of the look of the loco. Most of the pictures we see of this particular loco, the um, 20901, um, most of them are relatively clean. There's there, I think I found one picture that's really really grotty, um, but most of the time it's it, they're, they're quite clean. Um, prototypically so uh, we're not going to go totally mad with this one and just as a just kind of a, a touch you know the these handrails will obviously get um, grimy as, as the, the loco is used and as people walk up and down and, and hang on to the, the rail, um, they're going to brush some off. So we're just going to clean a bit off to make a few clean areas just to, uh, just to highlight that just a little bit. Okay, now we're on to the, um, some of the soot. So obviously this is the main area for that, which is this, uh, this fan at the top. And we're using our brush on a um, quite a low um, pressure. So we're down to, I think it's about 15 PSI, so it's quite low. Just want to get all the fan in, um, covered in soot and probably just a little bit around the area as well where it would uh, just sort of settle on the on the roof there and then this um, this vent on both sides is also generally speaking a little bit darker a bit more soot on these than there is on the on the smaller ones so we're going to do those as well sure what these are at the top of their vents but they are um, in the pictures they do seem to have um, some sort of element of soot or grease around it so we, we're going to add that in as well and it's best when you're doing these sorts of effects you know a little and often really um, do it move on have a look once it's sort of dry because they dry a little bit differently and sometimes you look at things a second time and they just look totally different and you think, oh, I've overdone it. Uh, on camera, sometimes the contrast between the black and some of the other colors 
is a little bit more than it would be um, in real life anyway but um, actually looks quite accurate compared to the, uh, the model I've got on my hand and then we just uh, a little touch of weathering powder not going to go too mad again because this isn't one of our completely relict uh, locos but just in the uh, in the, the nooks and crannies and the crevices where um, where the grime would collect it's along the bottom there along the buffer beams uh, especially where the buffers are going to be refitted those those plates Okay, so now we are on to the, um, sort of the bogies underneath. Now um, I've set the, um, the airbrush again to so feel low, sort of 10 to 15 PSI. Uh, the reason for doing that is we don't want the whole paint to just splash out because those wheels uh, have got pickups in them obviously. And um, if we start to get paint on them, then we're gonna destroy the contact between that and the track and then nothing will work um, however having said that they still will need a clean whatever because you're going to get overspray on them so but I'm just trying to be careful just to minimize any overspray that I may um, that I will get on them These wheels at the which is the back and the guy underneath the cab, they they are just they are still pickups, um, but they're free wheeling the knock geared, so we can just spin them around and we can just add some weathering in some um, of the brown. This is flat earth actually. We can add some of that onto the wheel just to uh, just take the shine off them. The ones at the other end, these are driven wheels, so they are actually geared. So we can only do a little bit at a time, and then we'll just rotate them because the uh, the lids off of this, we can just turn that around. There's a weathering powder, which is a uh, Humbrol Dark Earth, and also using this one, which is um, which I can't remember what it's called. It's like um, light dust I think it's called and that's just like a white beige sort of cream colour just to add a few little details in so again not going too crazy with the powders because obviously yeah, we don't want to get any um, sort of in the way of the, the electrical connections so we need to clean this off anyway. Must always clean this. So there will be overspray. It's almost uh, almost a given. Um, so a cotton bud with uh, um, in thinners will be will be perfect, and that will that will get the uh, any overspray off of the wheels and uh, off the back of the wheels where the pickups connect. So just using that that white little beige powder there just just for a couple of sort of highlights along the bottom of the uh, the bogies so time to put them back together now the uh, the only goes on one way which is that way it just clips into place and then pop the buffers back in and that just holds them in holds the whole body in place you just click in Now the only thing I need to do, because the way this is, um, this joins together, is obviously the buffers are now in bare um, plastic. So we're just going to, rather than getting the airbrush out, just going to touch it in with the same colour that we've used for the rest of the uh, the grime, which is this um, 
flat earth. I think it's called. And we're just going to put a bit on, brush it off just so it stays in the nooks and crannies, and then our weathering powder, and that should bring it really close to the rest of the uh, look of the wagon. That's it, we're done. Here's our finished um, class 20 slash 9 20901. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I've fixed up some uh, little techniques, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.